Well, morning everybody, and I'm back out. Um, my knee's not perfect, but I think I'll be able to walk about a mile. Um, so I've done a little bit of walking prior to now without a backpack on, so I'm gonna go, I've got a really light backpack. All it's got is, in, in, is my drone. I've got one lens, my 24 to 120, and I'm just gonna just see where I can go, really. Um, and I'm here in a local woodland. It's not perfect conditions, but it's fantastic to be out. <laughs> now, I haven't got pebbles because I didn't think I'd be able to deal with pebbles with my knee. Um, I didn't want to be bending down too much. So she'll appear soon, but at the moment, she's walking with my wife, Anne. So probably for the next few weeks, I'm going to have to be walking on a fairly flat area like this. Um, I don't want to risk anything with my knee. I haven't got a brace on, um, but I've got to go to places that are fairly accessible really, um, which isn't a problem at all. Um, not being able to walk too far doesn't really matter in landscape photography. There's loads of things you can access, um, like this beautiful woodland here in, in the UK. We're really lucky, um, but I can't explore as much as I usually can so I've got to look a little bit closer and I'm going to be trying to just see what I can see really. Um, we've no mist, it's dry so it's not the perfect woodland conditions but I'm sure I'll be able to find something. I'm just going to try a little bit harder which will be fine. Oh it's nice to be out again though. <laughs> so it's really frustrating. I'm on the big path here um, you might just be able to catch the edge of it. Probably not actually, but I'll show you some B-roll. This is the path I'm walking on. And um, don't twist like that. <laughs> and there's a composition just through here that if I could just walk a bit down there, I think I could get, but I don't think I can go through this undergrowth without risking my knee. <laughs> and, and if I do anything, my wife will, well, I just can't go home basically. So. Yeah, I've got to stay on here. Um, so I've, I've, I'm a little bit restricted, but you know, that's sometimes good for photography, having that restriction. Maybe I need to look up, look, look at different things. Um, sometimes you're restricting your focal length or the amount of shots you take, or um, like I'm doing here, I, I'm restricted in where I can go. But I'm sure I'll find something. It just takes a little while. And I've got lots of time at the moment. The sun hasn't even risen yet, so. And I don't think I'm going to see much of it because there's a bit of a cloud base over there as well. Still beautiful though. And these silver birches, I'm sure I can find something here. Otherwise, I'm useless, aren't I, really? Right, I'll keep going down this path. <laughs> Having a dodgy knee. It's not good when you have to go backwards and forwards. <laughs> I've just been looking up and I think there might be a shot to be had. I just need to find the right sort of trees that just sort of cross over. And then maybe I could go a little bit wider like that and shoot it. But I think that's a little bit too complicated. It's not good for my back, this. <laughs> I think looking up is a good bet. I'm a bit cheeky, I veered off <laughs> the main path onto this path. I feel like I'm going to be okay on this. Um, so I'm just going to follow this down here a little bit and see what I can find. I, I need to, there's nice, some nice sky over there, but I just need to be careful because there's a horizon line there and it can look a bit, I, I probably want to be going a bit longer with my lens and just picking out sort of details of the trees, I think today. So, just keeping my eye peeled and seeing what I can find. This is so amazing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just love being out in the woodland. It just doesn't get better. It's amazing. So this is good. Um, oh, the sun's over there. It's like this ball, which looks pretty impressive. I'll show you that in a minute. But um, I found this oak tree, which is just so stunning and. What I like about it is one, I can get to it. <laughs> so it's quite a sort of flat bank up here where my camera is and this sort of flat area here and I'm just off the path there. So that's good news. 
and I just like the shape of it. It's quite simple. I like the green of the oak and then the green of the ground, sort of just that those two things connect it together a little bit. There's a little bit of interference from a tree on the left hand side as you're looking at it, but the tree is fairly isolated. So it's a good portrait of this oak tree. I'm going to have to get the sun. I can't run. <laughs> anyway, I'll take this. It's around about 60 millimeters F7. Pretty simple shot, about one and a half seconds because it's still pretty dark. Okay, so I've just moved just a little bit around, um, probably about 20, 30 meters from where I was. And I've got a shot here that I think sort of works, but doesn't really work. So I thought I'd show you why I'm in two minds about it, because I think that's quite interesting <laughs> to, to understand why things don't work as well as why they do work. Um, again, the sun's gone in now. I had that brief glimpse of the sun, but it's now gone in. Um, it's pretty much overcast, but there is the, whatever light there is is coming from the left hand side and you can see it's just creating a little bit of modeling on the, the um, green of the tree here, which is which is pretty good. Um, and I, I quite like the tree shape here and I quite like the fact that these branches just lead you in from this corner. Um, and I quite like these oak trees in the distance. I'm not sure, I've just got a little bit too much sky in there and you can see I'm quite high, that's about as high as I can go really. I can probably go a little bit higher. But this space here, I'm not sure adds to the shot. Um, so negative space is good, but I think this might be a little bit of dead space and, and I'm not sure this dead space works very well. Always good to have a little break. What a better place than underneath this hundreds and hundreds of years old ancient oak tree. Oh, I love this time of year where the leaves haven't started to come out, but everything's just really brown and dead after the winter. And there's just this sort of excitement about what's to come in the next few weeks. But yeah, there's still a lot to photograph. Um, I was thinking about just looking at some of these textures and seeing if I could get maybe an abstract of this, which could be quite nice. Uh, but yeah, have some coffee. Contemplate what we've got around here. The light's changing a little bit as the sun is getting higher, then obviously it's getting brighter and we're getting more light sort of cast in. So more light on this side and more shadow on this side. So the modeling is starting to change a little bit. So there's a lot to think about, but there might be something here. Um, just trying to find something that will look, you know, will look nice as a composition, even though it's just this abstract of this bark, it still could look, look quite good. And with this flat light, it's a really nice light to be able to take this in, I think. Okay, I found a little composition here. Again, the light's quite nice at the moment because we've got this lights higher. Um, we've still got a little bit of warm light and it's just, just casting just a bit of light in, but not creating any shadows. Um, so it's a bit like reflected light really, um, just off the sky rather than directly from the sun. And I just wanted to show you this because this is a good technique when you're trying to compose things. Quite often um, I'll put a square crop up on my camera because um, if, if I think something's going to look better in a different squat crop, then it's useful to look at what that's going to look like, if that makes sense. Now you can just shoot the whole width and then crop it afterwards. And that's what I'll end up doing, but this just visualizes it um, a little bit better or helps me visualize it a little bit better. So I've got um, th this, this tree down here, you can see, and in the middle, and then these three birch trees here, 
and I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna try taking that and yeah, just keep looking. I'm still in the same area. The oak tree is about three meters away from behind me. So I've not moved much at all really. So I found a little scene here that's pretty good. I've got a nice path coming through and then I quite like this curved sort of silver birch here leading through just to the silver birches in the background. Um, I'm not, again, a bit, I think there might be a little bit too much dead space here, but I think, I think it's quite good. And again, you know, there's nothing special about the conditions. It's dry, it's cloudy. Um, there's nothing amazing. I mean, usually I'd like to shoot in more wet conditions and foggy conditions. So I'm trying to just think about shapes and textures and um, you know, light and dark because that's what will make this shot. But I think it looks pretty good. Okay, I've got a shot here. The sun's just about to come out and it's a little bit abstract. There's some silver birches that are sort of just peering through this oak tree in the background. You can probably see them here just vertically. Um, and if I zoom out, you'll see a, a, the whole scene. So this is the whole scene and I've just gone in right to there. So I've tried to create something a little bit abstract um, using these silver birches that contrast with the oak tree, I think. Now, it's a bit of a risk, I'm sort of experimenting, but I think it looks pretty good. And I am just in absolute heaven here. It's absolutely amazing. I think the sun's gonna come out soon, so that's gonna make it difficult because we get lots of shadows, but it doesn't get better than this, does it? It really doesn't. Okay, so as I leave this amazing woodland, go back to my car, which I can almost see, to be honest, I'm that close. Um, it just reminds me of just how much there is closer than you think. I mean, we say landscape photography, we think about hiking up mountains, but you don't need to be able to do that. Um, you don't need to be able to um, go a long way or, you know, hike on difficult terrain to get to, to, to great places. I mean, we are particularly lucky in the UK, I think, because we've got these amazing oak and silver birch woodlands, which I'm really thankful for. But wherever you are, you might have a canal or a river or a field with a lone tree. A lot of stuff is accessible by the side of the road. So just, just remember that, um, you know, I'm to blame to show you that you have to go to these amazing places or climb these amazing mountains, but Quite often, it's all available, really close. Which is what I'll be finding out over the next month or two. <laughs> so just as walking back, the sun came out and actually, I think I might have found a little bit of a composition. I'm not sure whether the shadows are gonna ruin it, but um, it's, I'm shooting with the sun just off to the right across and quite often I'd prefer to shoot more into the sun um, and just get the specular highlights on the, on the side of the on the trees, but I think this might work. So I've just got this oak tree in the middle here. I really like these leaves that have just hang, hung on over the winter. And then these silver birches just sort of garden it from the side. I like the feel of silver birches against oak trees. I think they work really well because you've got this contrast of this color and the shape of them. So I think this might work okay. I don't know whether the sun's gonna create too much complication, but it's a simple image. So it's worth having a look. But wow, it's beautiful now. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Often like this, it looks better than it photographs. But yeah, can't complain when the sun comes out. I am about 100 yards away from the car park and just spotted a little scene here. It's, it's 
it's just the light catching the tree and these um, gorse bushes in the background. So I've just got the tree on the right hand side here, this opening which I quite like in, in the middle there which sort of draws your eye through and then these two silver birches here and then this gorse bush has got a little bit of flower on it so it looks good but um, yeah I'm just about to get back to my car, spotted this, thought I'd show you and it's just a simple scene that you can get really really close to where you park. There's always things everywhere, you just need to look. That was really, really enjoyable. I had such a fantastic time out in the woodland. I don't think I got anything amazing. The conditions were quite tricky. Um, it was quite dry. I, I usually like wet woodlands. I can cope without a bit of mist, but wet woodlands usually work quite well. I just wanted to talk a little bit about these photos. This first one here, I, I liked. It's interesting, actually. I remembered as I was um, walking past this, that I've actually taken this before. It's in my book, Woodlands, um, called Great Grandad. So this was, yeah, so this is in here, um, Great Grandad. And yeah, I've got it, I've got it here. You can see this one, there was a little bit more mist. I had a wider angle. You know, with mist, you can usually use a wider angle because it, it diffuses the, the sky and the, the, the line in the background quite well. So um, I think that worked a little bit better. I could go a little bit wider. Um, I really like the sort of close-up part of this tree as well, and I think if there's a little bit of mist just getting rid of the background, this area here, I'm not 100% sure about um, because of the background dead ferns, but certainly this is definitely a location to come back again. I'd, I'd completely forgotten about it. I really enjoy shooting the bark as well. Even though I maybe didn't come back with a, an amazing photo, I learned a little bit about the location. I, I thought differently about shooting close-ups that I never really do that much that I'm think, thinking I'm going to do more of them and I did get some good shots like this one I think is a really nice composition I really like it and I've not shot this before I think again probably a different time of year I'm thinking spring this might look quite quite good or autumn so it'd be really nice to go back to this location and then finally I didn't show this shot but this was a shot that I took just as the sun was coming out. And I sort of dismissed it a little bit because I was, well, to be honest, my knee was starting to hurt a little bit and I thought I'd better go back to the car and I didn't um, talk, but yeah, I really like this. I think, it, I think it works well. So I've got some exciting news. World Landscape Photographer 2022 is now open for entries. And this year it's a little bit different um, and we're also raising money for a fantastic charity and that is Red Cross, um, the humanitarian aid in Ukraine. And the Red Cross do an amazing job over there. And like many people, I'm sure you agree that the, what's happening to innocent people over there is just horrible. So anything that I felt that we could do to help with this competition would be great. It's just £10 to enter for five photos or £20 for 10. And um, yeah, the prizes are uh, more broad than they were last year. We've still got the top prize, which is the Nikon. Z7 II and the 24 to 70 millimeter lens, but there's lots of other uh, um, prizes as well. We've got a junior um, winner now, and we've got selected category prizes. We've got a backpack, some filters, BenQ screen bar, data color spider, some paper. I'm giving away some books. Uh, Mass is giving away something. So there's more categories now this year as well. We've got an overall winner, a youth winner, and we've got vistas, woodland, seascapes um, section, and we've also got an abstract and close-up section as well. So I really hope everybody um, can enter. Uh, you know, even if you don't think you're gonna win, then you'll be surprised, you know? <laughs> it's amazing, I was speaking to Felix last year's winner and he didn't think he would win. I don't know why, because it was a pretty amazing photo, but you know, he was really surprised. So. Don't think that your photo might not win, because if you think that, then don't enter, then it never will, will it? Anyway, thanks for considering it. Uh, the link's in the description below, and like I say, all the money goes to Red Cross. So on that, I just wanna say a massive thanks to this week's sponsor, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing platform to go and improve your skills. I've been using it recently to actually improve my videography skills and particularly my script writing skills. Marcus Brownlee, who's a good tech YouTuber, did a class on there. And it's just really in depth. It's a really good class. I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, I've also got my own class um, on there, the Lightroom Masterclass, which is 
just a, a fairly short class. It's about an hour and a half, something like that. And it just allows you to improve your skills to create extraordinary images. And I go through some of the techniques that I use. It's for all levels really as well. So you, you don't have to be um, beginner or advanced or intermediate. Any, every, any level will get something from it as, as they're tested to in the reviews below. What's really great is the first thousand people to sign up for Skillshare get one month for free. So that means use the link in the description below and you can go and watch my class. Uh, you've got months to do it and then you can cancel your membership and you get it for free. So it's super simple to do. Go and check it out. And that's it really. Um, go and check out somewhere local to you. I'm certainly going to be doing that for the next month or so. Thanks ever so much for watching. Until next Sunday. Bye.